Good morning, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I am the Reverend Allison Dean, Rector of St. Luke's Parish in South Eleuthera. Welcome to the Anglican Church's morning devotions for Friday, the 4th of August. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. Here ends the reading. Rest is invaluable. We all know what it's like to be sleep-deprived, to be exhausted, tired beyond belief, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually wiped out. It's a terrible feeling, yet so many of us live in a near constant state of exhaustion. We're caught in the proverbial hamster wheel, running, running, running without ceasing. We're juggling multiple jobs, families, bills, medical challenges, aging parents, and so on. People are depending on us, and we don't want to let them down. Sometimes it's not always possible to take a break right when we need it. Sometimes we use busyness as a distraction from problems in our lives. But we do need to prioritize our times of rest and refreshment. Otherwise, we ultimately won't be any good to anyone, not even to ourselves. This isn't a new age, self-help principle. This imperative to rest was given by God himself. In Genesis, we are told that God rested on the seventh day after creating the world, and he hallowed, that is, made holy the seventh day. He made the day of rest something sacred, something to be set apart. How many times in the Gospel accounts do we read that Jesus withdrew from the crowds to pray, to create space for himself, to rest? If God himself rested and took a day to cease from his labor, if our perfect Savior took time for himself, who are we to say we cannot or should not do the same? We who have been created in the image and likeness of God. This kind of rest is not laziness. It's not simply throwing off responsibilities we don't want to have. Rather, This rest is an intentional and deliberate effort to step back temporarily to take time to feed the mind, body, and soul. As Christians in an increasingly secular society, which lifts up the rat race for more money and power as the greatest of goals, we should embrace rest, Sabbath, as part of our Christian witness. As Walter Brueggemann says, the Sabbath can be an assertion that life does not depend upon our feverish activity of self-securing. 
but that there can be a pause in which life is given to us simply as a gift. It announces that the world is safely in God's hands. The world will not disintegrate if we stop our efforts. The world relies on God's promises and not on our efforts. The observance of Sabbath rest is a break with every effort to achieve, to secure ourselves, and to make the world into our image according to our purposes. Friends, even as God rested on the seventh day, let us carve out space and time to do likewise. Let us take the call to observe a Sabbath rest as seriously as we take any of our Christian commitments. We may just discover that in resting, we find strength, power, endurance, and so many other things that enable us to do more well, to be better than ever before. So take that day to go to the beach. Read that book that's been on your shelf for a year. Have lunch with a friend you haven't seen in a while. Take a day trip to a family island. Take time to pray and sit in silence with God. Whatever rest looks like, know that the world will not stop spinning because we rested. In fact, the sun will still rise and set because God holds the world in his hands. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Let us pray. God our Father, even as you rested at the end of your work of creation, help us to see the value and importance of rest in our own lives. May we learn to hallow it, to preserve it, to make it holy, to set it apart as a reflection of our confidence in you, that all will be well, because you are in control. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's devotion. As always, you are encouraged to share it as widely as possible. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.